Heavy casualties have been reported after a suicide bomber detonated an explosive waste at Mogadishu's Jaro Siyad Military Academy early Monday, sources said. The bomber targeted military personnel as they lined up after breakfast. A military officer who asked not to be identified as he was not authorized to speak publicly to the media said at least 20 soldiers were killed and dozens of others were injured in the attack. Some of the wounded sustained life-threatening injuries, he said. The Al-Shabaab military group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement via Telegram Messenger. The group claimed that one of its suicide bombers targeted the troops. Al-Shabaab claimed the explosion killed 73 soldiers and injured 124 others, a figure that has not been independently verified. The bomber was wearing a military uniform, according to the officer. It is not clear how the bomber managed to enter one of the most secure, secure military bases in the capital. Many of the soldiers belong to the 14th October Brigade created in commemoration for the victims of the single deadliest terrorist attack in Africa at Mogadishu Zombe Junction, which killed nearly 600 people on October 14th, 2017. Somali troops and local fighters have been conducting operations against Al-Shabaab since August last year. The Somali government vowed to continue the operation into a second phase to further remove the group from more territories in the countryside. Anna, an official of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, the NDC party, says the resignation of a cabinet minister for alleged corruption is proof that President Nana Akufado's government lacks the commitment to fight graft. Cecilia Abena Dapa, the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, resigned over the weekend for allegedly keeping $1 million and millions in local currency in her house, some of which she said was stolen by employees working there. She said in her letter of resignation that the amount does not represent the exact amount of their personal money that she and her husband reported to the police as stolen. Mustafa Bandi is the Deputy General Secretary of the Opposition NDC. He tells me that Minister Dapa's resignation will not bring relief to those Ghanaians who have lost their jobs or who cannot travel because of high fuel prices. We in the NDC think that government lacks the commitment to address this issue. We have held that the collapse of the Ghanaian economy is not natural and that government and its appointees' behavior have led to the collapse of the Ghanaian economy. And this is a typical example of what we have been talking about, and that they are keeping huge sums of this money in their homes. How can an appointee keep up to a tune of $1 million hard currency in her home in the midst of a collapsed economy? And so we think that the president doesn't have a commitment in dealing with corruption. And so her resignation is nothing. It doesn't heal the economy. It is just a matter that has exposed what we have always held about this government and its appointees. They are keeping huge sums of money in their homes belonging to the state. And that if everyone decides to keep money in their bank, what will become of the Ghanaian economy itself? What will become of our credit strength? Would have destroyed the economy. And so when we have a policy that people should transact businesses through banks, you have government appointees keeping money in their houses. And that is bizarre. I think um, the minister is honorable because I think she did the right thing by resigning and she wants an investigation. And she has denied that she did anything wrong. She is not in a position to decide whether she's done something right or wrong. It is in the discretion of the public to determine whether she's wrong or right. And so for me, I believe that we must begin to understand that the collapse of the economy is not a natural situation. It is very artificial. It is not because there was COVID or there was a Ukraine war. It's because the president is an appointee are engaged in such activities that undermine the credibility and strength of our economy. And so her resignation is nothing to write home about. Is it fair to want to blame the government for her action? The president himself eats corruption and drinks corruption. No president has been so corrupt in this country like His Excellency Nana Kufado is. You say the president himself is corrupt. Do you have any evidence to prove that? 
appointing families and friends when you have promised not to do same in itself a corrupt practice. Chartering a private jet in the name of buffing in the sky is in itself corruption. The Ghanaian people, what is their reaction? The Ghanaian people are not waiting. They are not ready for a coup, as all of us believe. But of course, the Ghanaian people are patiently praying for 2024 so that they could vote and vote out these gangs out of governance. Mustafa Bandi is the Deputy General Secretary of Ghana's main opposition, National Democratic Congress. He was speaking with me from Ghana's capital, Accra. Deadly attacks by unknown gunmen that killed several traditional chiefs, security personnel, and residents in the oil-rich Nigeria's eastern state of Imo have forced several candidates to drop out of a governorship election as scheduled for November. This as military authorities vowed to intensify efforts to raid the region of militants and kidnappers. One candidate that is staying in the race is Dr. Kachi Mwoga of the Opposition Action Democratic Party and a member of the American Public Health Association. He tells viewers Chinedu Ofo that despite the risks, the ideals of democracy are worth fighting for. It is really true that not only are people so afraid that they are not coming out to vie, they are even afraid to come to support the candidates of their choice. And people are even saying they'd be too afraid to even vote on that day. It's a sad situation. It's a very discouraging situation. It's a situation of hopelessness and helplessness. This is why I'm in the race precisely. I'm in the race to ask people not to give up. I'm in the race to ask people that something can be done. I'm here to help to wake up the spirit of the emo person. Dr. Wonga, you are a member of the U.S. Public Health Association. You are also experienced in medicine in Nigeria. Ordinarily, people say you are successful and you do not need to go through this possibly danger of either attack or the dirty, quote-unquote, nature of politics. So why are you going into it? Consider this. We are all sitting in a plane, and some guy who doesn't know his onions is the pilot in the cockpit holding a knife and a gun and says, anybody who comes near here, I'll kill him. But this guy is driving this plane, and you can see clearly that this plane is going to crash. What do you do? Sit on your seat and buckle your seatbelt and wait for a crash? Or take your chances to go in, knowing that you can actually pilot this craft out of this danger? Second is that, yes, you've captured my life as a doctor. You probably also need to capture the fact that I am a technology consultant. I have consulted for several states. I have consulted for federal agencies. I have consulted for the World Bank. And in the course of all of these, I have been able to deliver solutions to states in so many areas that can benefit my state and pull her out of this kind of situation we find ourselves. The current governor of Imo State, Senator Hopu Zodima, says he's done a lot, improving infrastructure, doing roads, uh, taking care of human capacity, and also lifting the state in terms of education. What do you think of these achievements that the governor hopes will get him back to the government house for a second term? Since the governor is confident about his achievements, then he needs not to fool the opposition. He should please ask his people, his agencies, to please let the opposition breathe. Let us be able to campaign. That was Dr. Kachi Mwoga, a member of the American Public Health Association representing the Opposition Action Democratic Party in upcoming elections in Nigeria's Imo state. He was speaking with viewers Chinedu Ofo from Abuja. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission has called for urgent attention to security problems and conflict in the country's Oromia region. Authorities have blamed attacks by the rebel Oromo Liberation Army, but the Rights Commission says local authorities are also committing rights violations and displacing people. Maya Misika reports from Addis Ababa. In its annual report this month, the state-appointed Ethiopian Human Rights Commission urged officials to pay closer attention to the tensions and violence in the Oromia region. The commission said there have been attacks in 13 of the 20 zones in the Oromia region, leading to an alarming level of casualties and an extremely concerning overall situation. The Ethiopian government blames a rebel group, the Oromo Liberation Army, for the violence. But the commission said the response of government forces has also resulted in rights abuses. Deputy Commissioner Rakib Malessa says the Rights Commission is emphasizing the need for peaceful negotiations. The retaliation measures taken by government equally incurs human rights violations because civilians are affected, people are displaced, 
because of the retaliated measures. Attempts to call and text a spokesperson for the Oromia region went unanswered. Fighting between the federal government and the OLA has caused thousands of deaths and displaced millions in the region over the past four years. A former resident and teacher in the Horo Gudru and Legazon, who wanted to remain anonymous, says school has been disrupted for the past two years where he used to live. I have taught for a long time there, for 26 years. But because of the security problems there I left, I am now in Addis Ababa. Even the way we left was in special circumstances. We walked 90 kilometers on foot, those of us who were able to leave. The resident says that the attacks are being carried out by militias known as Fano from the neighboring Amhara region. We know very well that it's the armed fighters Fano. They're the ones stealing, killing and displacing people. Everyone knows this, including government bodies. They are creating major problems. In April, federal government orders to integrate Amhara special forces, including Fano, into the federal military or the police triggered widespread protests. More recently, Amhara and Oromo militias have been targeting each other's neighborhoods, one example of Ethiopia's long-simmering ethnic conflicts. Emmanuel Adeno, executive director at the Center for Development and Capacity Building, which works in Oromia, says the conflicts have created mistrust in the community. The state of anarchy created around these areas of conflict is behind increasing levels of cruelty. It has eroded the trust that people had in one another. He says many social institutions aimed at helping people in need 